Hey guys, Caitlin here, and I'm about three months into my emergency medicine fellowship, so I thought I'd give you guys an update on how everything's going so far. Things like my progress, my likes, my dislikes, and so on. So just to recap, I just want to remind you guys that a little before I graduated, I had applied to a couple of different jobs. Internal medicine was an interest of mine, so I applied a couple of jobs there. Emergency medicine, of course, and then a couple of advanced urgent care places. And I ended up getting a job at an advanced urgent care and offered a spot at this emergency medicine fellowship position. So I had an opportunity to either go down a PA route and start my career, or pursue the fellowship and be an emergency medicine fellow. At first, it was a really hard decision to make, but eventually I made my decision on the type of experience that I would obtain. The fellowship was at a level one trauma hospital, and in emergency medicine, that's near to none experience. Also, it's really hard to get into emergency medicine as a new grad. Emergency medicine requires a lot of quick thinking, knowledge, and experience to do well in. And as I'm three months into my fellowship, I couldn't agree more. So choosing a job initially in emergency medicine, I thought was a great opportunity. Even though I'm more confident in my ability every single week in this fellowship, I definitely still go to my attending every single day for questions, concerns, or treatment guidance. And in emergency medicine, it usually takes a long time to get really confident with your workflow. In this fellowship, I feel like I'm learning more and at a faster rate than I would have otherwise gotten at the advanced urgent care position. With this fellowship and the fact that I'm at a level one trauma hospital, I've already been exposed to gunshot wounds, open fractures, STEMIs, cardiac arrests, Running an ACLS code and pushing epi and amiodarone, I've pushed adenosine, I've done CPR, all the while going to lecture every single week and learning about emergency medicine in specific. Also, on a side note, I know as a student that you don't like being pimped or otherwise tested on the spot of your medical knowledge, but as a fellow, you must be okay with this. I get pimped every single day. I even get pimped on the stuff that my patient didn't present with the what if patients, or what if your patient presented this way or had this past medical history. I've been pimped on EKGs I don't know how many times, but now I feel so confident with EKGs that I don't need an attending to look over them to diagnose a STEMI, an arrhythmia, a heart block, and the treatment I need to do to act accordingly. Also, some people argue that you have no autonomy as a PA fellow. And while this is true some of the time, and definitely true in the beginning of my fellowship, I feel that I've gained autonomy over the past three months to a point where I've actually ran parts of the ED on my overnight shifts with my attending just phone calls away. And as every fellowship may vary, I feel that the autonomy that I've had during my fellowship has helped me grow as a practitioner. And actually, a couple weeks ago, I had this overwhelming realization and happiness of my decision to choose this fellowship. I'd finally retrospected from the start of the fellowship and realized that I was so happy with my decision. I've learned more in the past three months than I have ever thought possible. Overall, I know everyone's personal experience and journey as a clinician is different, but I'm super happy in my decision to pursue this fellowship over the advanced urgent care job. The experience I'm gaining in the field that I love is near to none, and I cannot wait what the rest of this year has to offer. Well, anyways, I'll see you next week, guys. Hey, guys, if you're still listening, I provided a link for available PA fellowships across the country and a link of further information about PA residencies. So if you can't click this link in the video, you can always scroll down to the comment section as well, and it should be provided there. Have fun researching. Also, guys, if you haven't checked out our free clinical lab guides, you can do so through this link. Again, if you can't press it in the video, just scroll down.